there everybody and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today we're taking a look at the game Capone by Eldorado Games. It plays 2-6 to six players, takes about 40-70 to 70 minutes to play, and it's for ages 13 and up. Capone is an auction, bidding, and back alley dealing slash negotiation game in which you're trying to sell liquor during the Prohibition period. Now of course Capone is out and about and he's going to make sure that no one ever has too much liquor on hand and if they do, everyone suffers a consequence. The game is a unique drafting game in which the person who wins the uh, bid, the auction, is going to get everything, but then they'll have to give away their liquor in order to gain money and avoid Capone doing his dirty deeds among the town. At the end of three or five player rounds, in which uh, the game could be a shorter or longer variant, then you're going to tally up all of the people or patrons that you have, have, have fed liquor to, as well as any bonuses you got, and of course your monetary value, and whoever has the most is going to be the winner of this interesting little prohibitionist game. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you what comes in the game, I'll show you how to play, and then I'll give you my review. So here is Capone, the business of prohibition, and it is set up for three players. Let's go ahead and tell you what is in the game here, and then I'll go ahead and give you the rundown. Now, as you can see, every player is going to get one of these big player boards, which indicates basically their uh, place in which they're going to be selling you liquor. Additionally, there is a back area for the boards in which you can hide your current as well as any of your patrons that you have not fed yet and in front of your board is your cheats or special ability power as well as what your role is in the game every player in this game is going to have a unique role whether you're the auctioneer or the banker or driver or one of many others each of these specific roles is going to actually have something to do in the game, uh, not only with a special secret power. So, for instance, the auctioneer is going to control all of the auctions, whereas the banker is going to be the one distributing the money, and then this driver over here, he's going to actually control the liquor and how it goes into the car. Every player is going to start with their own player meeple, which will indicate when they're bidding and when they're going to be done, as well as all these little dots here, which will indicate they're going to get four random things of liquor in front of them. So, as you can see, there's many different types of liquor. You have beer, rye, vodka, gin, and rum. Uh, so after everybody's got four of those, they're also going to get currency. They'll get 20 uh, currency, and then three patrons, which will change from round to round. These are patron cards. These are the currency note markers, and these over here are the truck and the liquor in store for each and every round. As you can see, the truck is going to be stocked with 12 bottles each round, and depending on if you're playing the longer variant of the game or the shorter variant of the game, will determine what types of cards you're going to get in the game. There's a big stack of cards over there, which indicates the different patrons in the game and if we take a look at them it's going to tell you what they require as far as what type of liquor how much value they will give if you're able to feed them as well as any bonuses you can get at the end of the game if you're able to acquire a set of these specific type of cards this is the player this is the round board over here which indicates the three rounds of this specific game style and then of course there is going to be a last call a police raid and then you're finally going to reveal and show everything in the game you have the little duck over there which i assume is capone a bag here which which is going to have all the different types of liquor in it that are random, as well as this Capone coin over here, which if Capone ever shows up, you're going to flip this coin and determine what happens to everybody else, while the main player who is suffering the biggest loss is going to lose all of their liquor, which is dangerous in this game. That's pretty much all the components of the game, other than, of course, the rule book and this box over here. Pretty big. It's got a lot to show for itself. Let's go ahead and show you down below. I'll explain how to play the game, and then I'll give you the review. So back here down below, as you can see, is the three player setup, but if you want to play with more players, you're just going to go ahead and add these extra character boards here. The last little thing I didn't mention is that each character not only is a specific type, which will do certain things as well as specific ability, but they also have a specialty. When you feed your patrons or you give the, you serve them their drinks, you're going to be getting bonuses for the type of liquor that you serve them. So for instance, the driver, if he sells gin to a specific, uh, any of the, his patrons, he's going to get plus one on their value. So let's go ahead and show you the beginning of the game. Uh, we already set it up and I've already explained how how to do that the truck is ready and now we're going to begin with the auction or sorry the the uh let's begin with the drafting phase every player is going to get three cards but depending on the round whether it be one two or three will determine how many cards you get to start with you'll select one of these cards then you're going to pass them along just like you would any other drafting game so in this case he got this one he wanted this one uh, he will go ahead and take this one and then they're going to go ahead and pass and once again you'll do the same thing and then the passing will ensue until the player gets the uh, last card here and then everybody should end up with the same amount of cards they started with but probably different cards and in fact definitely different cards in which case now you've got different characters uh, whether it be a businessman or a bootlegger or a flapper any of these specific
specific type of people is going to have a set bonus. This one says times two. If you have two businessmen at the end of the game, you'll get four coins. And I hear you have two businessmen, which is good. A bootlegger, which if you have four of them at the end of the game, you'll get 10 points. And you're going to save these and you actually put them behind your board. These are the people that you're going to be trying to feed from round to round. And if you're able to do so, then you're going to score points. But remember, if you can't serve these people at the end of the game, they're going to be worth one minus one victory point per that you do not serve. In addition to each of the types of liquor you have out in front, the ones that are left over will also give you minus victory points. The next portion of the game is going to be the bidding phase or the auction phase in which the auctioneer will take care of. Everybody's going to take a certain amount of currency that is also hidden behind their boards and they are going to bet by taking as much as they'd like, putting it in their hand and then revealing it. For the player who has the most will be the player who gets all of the liquor. If at any point two players tie, so for instance, if both of these players here bet 10 apiece when they revealed and this player over here only bet Four, the players who have the same amount are actually going to cancel themselves out, and the player who uh, bid, bid the next highest is going to win. In this case, it would be this guy bidding four. So be careful when bidding. Make sure you don't bid the same amount as somebody else, because even if it's the highest, it doesn't matter when they cancel out. But regardless, in general, whenever you bid, whoever bids the highest is going to win all of the liquor. So let's just go ahead and say that the driver over here won. He bid ten, and everybody else bid nine. In this case, he's going to get all of the liquor, and you're gonna go ahead and place it on your board here. But remember, we gotta be careful because after this phase, Capone is gonna come, and if Capone shows up and somebody has 10 liquor or more, he is going to take away all of that person's liquor. So in order to avoid that, the next phase of the game is going to be in which every player is going to start bartering. And because everybody needs the liquor, because most of players' cards are not going to have just one single requirement, for instance, this bootlegger requires rye and requires vodka, this player requires rum and vodka, and this is a beer, that's a total of five. So even with the four here, that's not enough. So they'll have to actually barter with this player here. This player here is only going to want a certain amount or certain types of liquor and always going to want less than 10, unless other circumstances will change that. But nevertheless, he'll look at his cards most likely, determine that he wants at least one vodka, at least one rye, and then at least a rum and a beer. The rest of these can probably be up for sale, unless they want to, he wants to keep these. But remember, he has to always be at least less than 10. This, these little dots here indicate how much liquor you can have during the certain phases. So let's go ahead and start bartering. So now that he's got these, he's good with those four. He's going to go ahead and say, okay, I've got two beer, and I'm going to go ahead and sell two beer. Who wants any beer? And this player says, oh, I need a beer. I don't have one. Okay, well, I'll give you a beer for $2. And he'll say, okay, I'll give you $2, and I will take a beer from you. Now, you can go ahead and decide amongst each other what things are worth during what rounds because that will change from round to round and this player of course he wants his beer he wants a rye and a vodka and a rum and a vodka so he's gonna need two vodkas as well so he's gonna say oh i want uh five and i'll give you two vodka and then this player over here might say oh i also need vodka he actually doesn't but he might say oh i actually need vodka and i would bid you more in which case they can go back and forth okay i'll give you five for the two vodka so in which case he'll go ahead and take these two vodka and this player over here, he might not actually need anything at all. So maybe he's like, well, I don't need anything because all of my cards say two beers and two vodkas. And I actually happen to have two beers and two vodkas. So he doesn't need any beer, but he'll take it for cheap if he can get his hands on it. So he'll say, I'll give you one for whatever you don't want that's left. And this player might be good. He doesn't want to spend any more money. So in this case, he's got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He'll at least need to sell two more. So he'll say, okay, well, I don't need these two rye. So I'll give you these two rye for $2. In which case these will go over and I think we're good now. He's got two, four, six, eight. Oh, one more. He has to get rid of one more. So maybe this player will say, okay, I'll give you a dollar for this one over here. After this happens, players are done. Whenever they finish with this phase in which they want to trade, and remember, you can actually trade your patrons as well. You can go ahead and put your guys back behind your board, that indicating that you're done with this phase. Then Capone is going to show up. Capone's going to drive up here or squeak up here, quack, quack, quack. And then when he arrives, he's going to check every player. And if any player has 10 or more bottles of liquor, then, or sorry, if anybody has more than 10, it's more than 10 bottles of liquor, then that player is going to actually lose all of their liquor. So in this case, he would be have, have been fine with uh, 10, but whatever. So he shows up, he checks everybody, he says, okay, we're good. Now, if one player did have more than 10, then he's actually going to come by, take all of their liquor, flip a coin, and then determine what happens to everybody else. And in this case, they would lose half of their money. 
the other side would say half of the bottles of liquor. So you always want to be careful with Capone, and sometimes it might be worth messing with him and having him uh, facilitate somebody's demise by taking their liquor. After Capone decides to show up or not, then you're going to move on to the feeding phase in which you're going to pop out any of the characters that you might be able to serve, in which case this is going to be two vodka, a uh, rum, a uh, beer, and a rye. That'd be the five. These are going to a discard pile. Put these guys out and make sure that they're in front of you. And everyone else would do the same, revealing whatever they can. If you don't actually have the ability to uh, serve these guys just yet, you can wait as long as you don't wait until the last call of the game. After everybody's went ahead and done that, whatever liquor is left and money is left is good, then you're going to go ahead and uh, move on to the next round and deal out four cards instead of three for these Capone cards to each player, do a draft. The driver is then going to pull these specific liquor bottles out and put them on the truck here. And this is a prototype, but what's actually going to happen is this is going to be empty. And when you discard bottles, you'll actually go into here and they'll slide into the truck, which is a really cool, unique mechanism. And then you're going to finish that round. You go on again, and then final last call. You're going to collect any tips from people. So for instance, this guy has two businessmen, so he'd actually get $4. And if anybody else had sets, that would happen. Then the police are going to raid. They're going to come and check to make sure you don't have any extra bottles lying around or any patrons that have not been served. And if you do, you'll lose one point for each of them. Finally, after that, you're going to reveal any currency that is behind your table, as well as, uh, the, I guess, yeah, just all the currencies behind your table that you've basically saved up throughout the entire three or five rounds. And whoever has the most currency is the winner of the game, Capone. And that's the basic idea how to play the game. It's a fairly simple drafting, bidding style game, which we'll now come up and talk about. So Capone is an auction style drafting game set in Prohibition period, having to not only have your run your own private liquor business, but also do with the cops and of course Capone himself and he is the big boss he controls pretty much everything in this game and he forces you to make trades you might want to have all the liquor in the world and sell it at unreasonable prices and give people unreasonable deals but Capone won't let that happen because if you don't be fair he's going to mess with you he'll mess with them but he'll definitely mess with you more so being nice is kind of the key while also trying to win the game your patrons are also showing up and attempting to gather the types of liquor that they want and you'll have that draft opportunity to choose what you want. The draft ones very smoothly. It's really fun to decide what you want and how you want to try and get it based on what you have in front of you and also determining what you want to get even if you may not have what you need right now but on a later round because there's certain things that are worth much more in value than other uh, different types of customers. So you can get one for a guarantee that's worth a couple points but if you can get these three flappers that's nine at the end of the game that's way better than four but it might cost you and you might not have that liquor you need. Hopefully the person who wins the bid is going to facilitate you. Now, winning the bid is great because you're going to be able to feed or serve most of, if not all, of your customers. Sometimes you won't. It'll depend. But uh, if you're able to serve them, that's great, and that's going to facilitate you. But at the same time, you need to try and make up for the cost of winning the bid which has a really interesting mechanic to it. And I really like the theme involved in this game. This has a ton of theme seeped into it, which I'll get to in a second. Moving on though, talking about the uh, trading phase and the bidding phase. With the auction, when that happens, the players that bid the same amount are gonna get canceled out. So then another player who bids maybe one or two, that could happen, are going to actually, in fact, it did happen in my first game. Uh, but if a person bids one or two, they get it because everybody else bid the same amount but too high. Uh, certain certain auction games I think that works better than others, and in this one it was it was okay. It kind of made me win the game in that aspect. I'm sure it won't happen that often. But for those of you who don't like that mechanic, you could probably even just choose to take it out and have people rebid. I suppose. Nevertheless, it was kind of a uh, some people didn't really enjoy that. Uh, additionally, the liquor is sparse. Now this is during Prohibition, which makes sense thematically because you don't want to uh, be caught, of course, and it's harder to get what you need, and there's always more people who are interested in drinking than drinking the drink that is available which works really well in theme but i can see how some people might say ah oh, i just never feel like i have enough which can be quite irritating for me it worked out really well i really enjoyed that aspect but there's some people at the table who are like oh, i want more but i'm never going to get more and i mean welcome to prohibition right that's kind of how it works but just to let you know that's kind of how it functions the game can play short or long and it depends on how much you want to go into it of course playing a longer game in my opinion is better and more players in this game is always going to be better as well it plays just fine at three though two players is, is a fine two-player game but i think it really shines at four and five players i really really enjoyed that player count i think it might have a higher player count up to six but i only have five boards Let's talk about theme now. This game gives you an entire board that shows up as a location. 
Uh, that is amazing. Additionally, there is the bonus points you can actually get from uh, the specific type of person that you are. If you're a card dealer, your specialty is vodka, and you get points for that, which makes a difference in the game, as well as your special secret power. It's a cheating power, it really is. The banker can look behind boards and see what you have after spending a certain amount of currency. The card dealer, before dealing cards, he can search the client deck and take any single card that he wants out of the box. Very, very powerful. In most games like this, that would be considered cheating because everybody has a very special, powerful mechanic. It's fair on all accounts. Uh, this one over here has got Henchman. You're not affected by another player's Capone coin flip this round. That's super useful, especially if you're going to be seeing Capone. But yeah, so everybody has their own uniqueness. And not only that, but everybody plays a certain role in the game. So like in Monopoly, how you have a player that plays as the banker just because somebody has to play it. In this case, choosing the banker might be the ability you want, but then you're also going to have to deal the out. As well as if you're the driver, you'll have to move the truck and put the liquor on the truck. So you feel the theme of whatever you're playing as. As well as utilizing that ability functions the same way as well. And I love that about this game. I'm a big fan of bidding games. I really like drafting games. And I like the fact that this game is also short and sweet, or if you want to extend it, you can have that ability too. The artwork works just fine. I really am looking forward to seeing what these are going to look like in their finished components. I want to actually see them all be a little different and unique because I want to feel like they're all different little speakeasies that you can go to. So hopefully they change that up. Of course, a lot of the artwork is not finalized. This is a prototype, so I'm not going to mark it down on that. The bottles of liquor are cute. They work. It's easy to read. It's easy to understand. And overall, this is an enjoyable game. This is a joy to play. Of the three games I've reviewed from them, this is my favorite and by quite a bit, just because I love the theme of the game, I love the style of the game, and I, I, I just like the fact that you feel like you're part of this specific period. And a unique aspect too of having all that liquor, but you have to get rid of it and you can make good deals, but if you don't make fair deals, then you're gonna be snuffed out because Capone's gonna come and take what is his and it functions so well. Overall, I enjoyed this game, Capone, and I think you will as well. If you like auction games, if you like drafting games, and the social aspect of giving people certain things and whatnot, some people might feel a little bit uh, agitated at this game when you're trading certain things for somebody and you're not trading it with them. They can get kind of frustrated. Oh, why didn't you give me this? Why didn't you give me that deal? And I can understand that as well, but that's all part of the theme to this game. Anyway, if you want to take a look at Capone, you can go ahead and check it out. Link down below in the description. It's currently on Kickstarter. This is getting my seal of approval. Yeah, that's how much I like this game. All right, guys, outro time. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as hitting that bell notification button. It'll tell you whenever we do more reviews, walkthroughs, playthroughs, and other good stuff for you to go ahead and check out. Thank you so much for watching. I think you're going to enjoy Capone. You guys that love auctioning and drafting games, this is such a unique and, and, and different concept, which is what I really enjoyed about this one here. We're probably going to play this live. So if you're watching my live streams every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST on our Facebook page, down below in the link in the description, you can watch us play this game live and tell us what you think about this game. I'll probably have it up in the next week or two on stream, and I'll probably post it up on YouTube itself. All right, guys. That's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to dealing with selling you some liquor in the prohibition period and avoiding Capone next time.